I don't believe that the tools enforce an aesthetic look as much as some people seem to think. So to me, the most important thing about a camera system is technical because I'm, because I'm going to define my own aesthetics no matter which camera I use. The first time I shot something as a, as a cinematographer with an Arri camera, it was a, an Arri S, 16 millimeter black and white, for um, a film school project that I did with Ryan Johnson. I knew I wanted to um, be a cinematographer, and, and the best thing I could think to do at the time would be, you know, kind of my dream was to be, to be Ryan's cinematographer, and, and um, you know, that's worked out, and we've done some, some really fun stuff together. When I talk to a director about how we want to design something, I like to make sure we're on the same page with the big picture overview. A lot of the, the artistry of cinematography is in all of the individual details. The lighting and the shot design for each scene really suit the narrative that's being told in that case. I think there's always an imagination that a, you know, a huge movie is a whole different skill set, but it's, um, I mean, you're really just doing the same thing for more days. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you have to keep going. It's not finished yet. Star Wars had the most useful prep of any movie I've ever done. Everything from really being able to talk to the production designer and his set designers about where there were lights in the sets, especially when we were going to be in a completely closed set where you can see all the walls. You know, we can't we can't fly a wall. We can't have something in the ceiling. It's all got you know to some extent um, the shape of the light has to be designed with a set designer. We use sky panels for a lot of different things, but the primary use was in very large arrays of different kinds, whether it was uh, the, complete, the, the complete ceiling of a stage covered with diffusion, whether it was a dome, whether it was a big rectangle hanging from a crane, but we would use them in large arrays. We could have light changing faster and in more complex ways than we ever could have before. I had some scripts that I had written that where I could render very quickly completely new versions of things. You know, like for example, we had a if we have a barrel roll, you know, and, and the barrel roll is a hemisphere where it's half of it's black and half of it's white, theoretically that's kind of correct for a barrel roll because you're facing the sky and then you're facing the ground and then you're facing the sky. But when you look at the like aesthetically you look at it and you're like, yeah, it doesn't really look right. Like it doesn't you know, they're only going to be on the shot for, uh, you know, two seconds or a second and a half. And all that it's going to be is the thing, you know what I mean? If we really want to feel it spinning, we need more spinning. So I can re-render one that instead of being two hemispheres, there's a whole bunch of blades. And I can re-render that in like one minute and reload that. So it's not a big complex process to, to, to you know, to quickly make changes. So basically I shoot exactly, I shoot digital exactly the same way I shoot film. I use, I use my light meter, I use film lighting ratios. I use one LUT, um, which is the equivalent of just one print stock with one printer light. When I used to do um, completely photochemical movies, it was the same thing. I would, I would have my printer light that was a base printer light that, um, you know, we could, we could print uh, day exterior, you know, uh, night interior, we could print anything at that printer light and it was going to look, it's not going to necessarily be the finished movie, it's not necessarily going to match perfectly, but it would always look good and like a, you know, it, it wouldn't look like a, something you would have to make an excuse for. I'm interested in in processes and authorship and what, what individuals do um, as visual storytellers um, to, to, to make a visual narrative. And I think that the new technologies are are freeing in the sense that it's now possible to take control of authorship in ways that that used to be completely fixed in a in a very technical sense is now untethered but that's also means we have more responsibility the idea of anything artistic is to raise questions and push boundaries and do new things if a new age dawns where we kind of admit and understand more how important the process is, that actually frees up the tools. Decoupling the process from the tools doesn't belittle the tools. It makes them that much stronger.